Good afternoon. So glad you have joined us today for DI Live's benefits of moving your local servers and clients to the cloud. We invite you to stick around after today's presentation for a live Q&A. We will get started momentarily. We are just waiting a couple of minutes for others to join us. Okay, we will go ahead and get started. Without further ado, I'll hand things over to Kyle Elias and Michael King. At Inflow Technology, we strive to be your trusted partner. For the last 19 years, Inflow has serviced thousands of customers just like you. From tools like SolidWorks Data Management to the 3D Experience platform, DriveWorks, and even custom programs, we have world-class experts working with you from beginning to end. Every step of our process is tried and true. We're there for every stage, from uncovering your needs, to planning, implementation, validation, data migration, launch, and beyond. You, the customer, are always top of mind, making sure that we get you the best solution for any challenge you face. As the only certified solution partner for SolidWorks PDM and Anovia PLM products, we can handle anything from a simple PDM standard implementation to a global ANOVIA implementation. Your success is critical to us. We not only want to understand your process, but we want to train you for success and make sure that you're only getting better at what you already do best. And who are you as the customer? You could be anyone. A Fortune 500 company, needing a new system, maybe a new startup, just exploring your options. At Inflow Technology, we always think customer first and work to solve every problem. We're not just a software company. We're a team of experts working side by side with our customers to make them better at what they do best. Hey, welcome everybody. I just wanna say thank you for being here and being a part of our Design Innovation Month. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the benefits of moving your environment to the cloud. I'm going to be one of your hosts. My name is Michael King. And I also have Kyle Elias. We are both PLM Solutions Consultants with Inflow Technology. And today we want, we're, we're excited to talk about this. This is something that's uh, pretty important to Kyle and I. Uh, we believe pretty heavily in the cloud. So we wanted to go through some benefits of moving your environment to the cloud and we're gonna put a little bit of a, a constraint on that. When we say your environment, we're talking about SolidWorks and SolidWorks PDM or your data management system. 
So we're not just talking about everything cloud related. We're really kind of focusing in on SolidWorks and uh, PDM. So I'm going to go ahead and let Kyle introduce himself and we'll get going here. All right. Thanks, Mike, for that. Like Mike just said, my name is Kyle. I'm an applications engineer here with Mflow. And really, we just want to show you guys some of the things we heard over the last couple of years with regards to cloud environments and cloud implementations. So yeah, that's what this presentation is all about. All right, great. So let's get a, go ahead here with the agenda. Uh, first, we're going to take a few minutes and talk about existing infrastructure or the traditional way things are set up and um, what to look at in that. Then we'll spend a few minutes going over infrastructure as a service, talk about what that means to us. We're going to dive into actual some points that are benefits of moving your environment to the cloud, and we're going to break those down. Uh, we'll talk about existing solutions and then how inflow services can work with those existing solutions or even with some of our current partners that we deal with. And then we'll have a Q&A session at the end of this, so stick around. To start us out, I just wanted to go over what is cloud computing. So when we say cloud computing, simply put, cloud computing is the delivery of computing services, including servers, storage, databases, networking, software, analytics, and intelligence over the internet or the cloud. And that offers you to have the capability to do things faster and have faster innovation. And also that we can have flexible resources available to us. Now this is so we can have fixed costs when we look at our server equipment so we can be faster with what we're dealing with. And we can also have dedicated and fixed costs that we know how to uh, keep track of but also have that ability to grow and to scale our operations if we need to on demand. So when we start talking about existing infrastructure in the traditional setup, we're usually talking about something like this, where we have users who are on workstations that are sitting in front of them. Um, they, they're using SolidWorks that's installed on one of these uh, workstations or laptops or computers they have in front of them. And this is usually one machine per person, and those machines tend to be higher end. So the data card we, or the graphics card we need uh, to run SolidWorks, the type of machine we need, we're talking about machines that aren't something we can get real cheap. They're going to be that $2,000 to $4,000 range workstation. And that requires us to have one machine per person, and I know probably some of you on the phone even have maybe a laptop and a desktop, so you can have that mobility. We see that quite a bit. Uh, but it usually involves where we have a, a user using machine where everything's located. And when we look at servers, those servers are usually on premise. And they're sitting in a room with SolidWorks PDM installed on them or whatever your data management of choice is there. But SolidWorks, we usually see PDM. You know, it's a physical box sitting in a room maybe with other physical boxes and physical servers and equipment. And usually what that means is that we have some required upkeep to deal with, you know, right inside of our room, right? We have um, the ability to patch it, update it right in the room where our server is sitting. There's also some other things to take into account that we're going to look at here later. But when we talk about the traditional setup, users on workstations dealing with servers that are on-premise inside the building. Now things to consider when we're talking about that infrastructure, that traditional sense there where everything's local, one machine per person type deal. Number one is the age of existing infrastructure. So kind of tongue in cheek over here, we have a image of an old monitor with SolidWorks 95 on it. And dear God, if, you're, if you are on SolidWorks 95, please let us know so we can help you get off of that. But anyways, um, so we, you know, we have, we have older, equipment that we have to worry about. What do we do with that equipment? What do we do with our infrastructure? Is our network speeds, are they what we need for our current, um, you know, our current needs and what we're doing in engineering? Could also be, you know, servers right now are changing pretty fast. The requirements we see from Microsoft, you know, with SolidWorks, PDM, we gotta have, we're changing the, what, what OS the server can be on pretty frequently. So keeping in mind, okay, this server might only last us three to three years if it's sitting in this room with us. 
this laptop might only last us three or four years. This desktop might only last us three or four years. What do we do? How do we keep track of that? We also need to think about the ease of, of access and the ability to be mobile. So a lot of our customers are dealing with situations where they have to work from home. And we're finding out, which you can see through our, our, um, our support log, that the VPNs they're using, the current infrastructure, that ease of access and be, to be mobile and work from home may not be there. So think about that when we're looking at these things. Um, do we have a disaster recovery plan? And what do we do? So in the, when we're dealing with this, it's on our plate. What do we do in the case of something going down or our building getting you know, taken out? Uh, something happens and, and we have to recover uh, geographically or even site uh, specific. But what would we do in that case? C keeping that disaster recovery plan, that's up to us. We really got to think about the total cost of ownership of this traditional infrastructure. We got to think about, number one, the overtime that's involved in fixing issues with uh, equipment that's under our control in our building. Um, it, it never fails that, that servers go down at the exact wrong time. Services for those servers go down and we have to have someone on call to be able to come in and fix it over the weekend. And when you start adding that up, how much time did we spend over the last couple of years on overtime to fix servers or to deal with emergencies for that equipment or just the cost of that space and the utilities of that, the, the, the air conditioning for that room that we have on site to be our server room. So there's also that planned and unplanned downtime that we are spending those overtime dollars or, or whatever that is to do upgrades and patching. And quite frankly, what happens a lot of time is we see that folks um, have to wear two hats. So the engineering, you know, PDM admin might be spending time upgrading and patching their, the PDM server um, or vice versa. Maybe we have IT groups, but they're worried about other things and sometimes patching and updating and things like that slip our mind. And then we have exposed servers that, that could have issues because it's somebody's secondary job. And then there's licensing, you know, keeping track of are we on 2012 R2 server? Are we on 2016, 2019? What are we doing with all that? Um, just keeping track of the different licensing that we have to worry about uh, when we are dealing with this equipment. All right. So kind of following the same lines here and things to consider that Mike just talked about. We wanted to give you this a visual of things to understand, things to consider as you're thinking about moving your services to the cloud. So if we get, get a click there, Mike, let's just for a minute envision this uh, scenario here. We have a customer with an office in Chicago, another one in LA and a third one in Miami. So I want you guys to think about what is the age of those servers or do they even exist uh, on those three different locations? Is it easy to get to? Do your engineers really need co to collaborate from one site to, the, to another? How much does it cost to run those servers and update them, keep the licenses up to date, uh, patch them up as you would normally? So those are all things for you to kind of keep in mind as you're thinking about this transition. Does it make sense for me to move to the cloud? thinking about everything that is going on today and how my infrastructure is set up today. So just want to touch on what is IAAS and that stands for infrastructure as a service. A lot of you guys have heard of SAAS, which is software as a service, but this is a one step further uh, above that. It may, really means hosting your entire server on the cloud. So not just one app, or not just one piece of software, it's the entire machine, it's the entire Windows server. This allows you to use any one of the providers that are available today, and you, we definitely have some partners that we work with if you want to work with us for that. But if you want to procure your own, we can definitely help you there as well. And what is included here with this service, with the infrastructure as a service, is of course licensing. So you don't have to worry about you know, your Windows licensing, even your uh, SQL certificates or SSL certificates. Um, you don't have to worry about storage or purchasing, you know, storage, your network is included, uh, your virtual firewall is included, and of course, access would be included. So all those things are some, some 
items that we can take off your hands if you move to the cloud. So just wanted to kind of explain to you a little bit what IAS is all about. So for most of our customers today, they mostly go in two different directions when talking about IAS. Direction number one would be hosting your server alone on the cloud. That means your engineers or whoever needs to access that server still get to keep their workstations and work from wherever they're working today and connect to that cloud hosted machine. You can use that machine to host, of course, SolidWorks PDM if you wish, and people from different offices can access it fairly easily. The second solution that we see customers going towards today is doing the same thing, hosting your server on the cloud, but also using v what we call VDIs. Those are virtual desktops. So basically that means that not only your PDM server is hosted on the cloud, but now your also your SOLIDWORKS can be hosted on those cloud VDI machines. So what does that look like? Basically, instead of your engineer having one expensive working workstation that he has to take with him everywhere, he can simply access one of those cloud machines and work with them and uh, they can be pretty much as powerful as you wish them to be. So uh, just two different solutions for you guys to think about. And those two different routes are, are you know, what 90% of our customers do. All right. So when we start talking about why move to the cloud, what are the benefits? What's the whole deal with this? Why do we want to do it? So this is going to be an overview real quick, and then we're going to break these out and talk about them individually. But we're going to talk about how with the cloud, we get the 24-7 support disaster recovery capabilities that are faster than usually what we can offer internally. And then basically software updates that are included, predictable costs. So we have that, that cost that we can use um, to budget out our operation for the year so we don't go over. I mean, it's very predictable in what we're doing. We have the capability to work from anywhere in either one of those solutions that Kyle was talking, whether we just host the server or we host both where you have the VDI and you have your workstation online that you can access from a, a modest, you know, everyday PC or whatever you have at home. And it's still safe and secure um, as a hosted VDI uh, with one of the uh, services. Security, uh, how we're gonna actually have a much safer and secure environment for folks to work in, especially when we're dealing with mobility and the flexibility to grow as needed uh, with licensing or uh, capabilities of the servers or the VDIs as the workstations. And then obviously the licensing that we don't have to worry about on the server, uh, keeping track of, you know, are we on 2012, R2, 2016, or 2019? So the first bullet we wanted to emphasize a little bit on is of course support. and. I know most of you guys are SolidWorks customers and RCATI customers, and we do have support for that. But what we're talking about here is support through the cloud hosted provider. Most of them today provide 24 seven support. So that literally means there is no geographic location you can be in and not get support with them. So, you know, let's say you have an office in Germany or in Europe or in another office here in the USA that's still not a problem because you can call support any time of the day and they'll pick up the phone. Um, also with that, most of the cloud hosted providers today will guarantee 99.9% .9 uptime. And I want you guys to ask yourselves, can you get that with your current infrastructure? And I'll just leave it at that. So, you know, something to think about support is a big item here. You can call them at any time. Hey, my server is not working. I need help with this. I need help with that. And they'll kind of answer the phone for you. Another item that's important with IAS is of course upgrades. So we can take that off your hands if you choose to move to uh, the infrastructure as a service model. That means Windows Server upgrades can be a part of this. Of course, security patches, so uh, you don't have to keep doing that on your own anymore. We can even go as far as upgrading SOLIDWORKS and SOLIDWORKS PDM for you every year if you choose to do that service with us. Uh, also, as a part of the upgrade yearly, we can do SQL maintenance plans and you don't have to worry about hardware upgrades. So we don't have to worry about upgrading your RAM because it's getting older or upgrading your hard drive because it's getting a little bit older. All that kind of happens in the background. We can take that off your hands and save some time from you and kind of, you know, just do that service for you. Yeah, even especially with that, that the hardware upgrade. Those usually have to happen over the weekend and usually have to do it when there's downtime or maybe over um, certain times when the building's going to be closed. 
So that ends up adding costs that we have to deal with over time to deal with the hardware replacements and being down. But with the cloud hosting, we have predictable costs. We have the ability to eliminate that capital expenditure, um, especially of things that we that are unforeseen. But we don't have to worry about the the, the as much of the infrastructure purchase that we have to deal with. So when we have, you know, to rebuild our our network and our facilities, uh, when we have to do all these things to accommodate. Um, you know, to our server rooms and different things like that. Uh, we don't have to worry about the the licensing. It can be spread out over the course of the of the cost that we have applied to the cloud hosting. Uh, there's also the spare component idea. So what we see a lot of times is folks will have you know multiple extra laptops nearby, so their engineers are never down. The cost of that stuff sitting on the shelf, we don't have to worry about that anymore because of the spare components, maybe for the server for the the actual uh, workstations, you don't have to worry about that. It's all taken care of by someone else under that predictable cost. So if that server goes down, if that workstation goes down, it's not really your problem to worry about if it's going to cost another uh, three or four hundred dollars to get the server repaired physically. Uh, that's going to come through and, and be a part of the built-in predictable cost that we're dealing with. It's also pay-as-you-go models. We can stop at any time, and they're very predictable for the budget. So we can say this year we're going to cover and spend X amount of dollars, and that's all we're going to spend on it. And everything else is worked out by that third-party provider, whether they have to spend overtime fixing their building or spend time changing out hardware. That's their problem, and you don't have to pay for it, And besides the predictable costs. Uh, the easy-to-access piece here. So this we have a picture on the right. Um, you know, you got Microsoft that's actually trying to to put a uh, a server and so like a data center under the ocean type thing. So what they were doing here is uh, we we're we're not you know leave this up to people like Microsoft. Leave this up to people who care. You, you shouldn't be worried about you know trying to access things under the ocean and all that. That's that's somebody else's problem. So just how complex things can be um, and how you know crazy things can be dealt with that's leave that up to somebody else so you don't have to worry about it but the ease of access when we are dealing with these cloud environments we actually see folks using a four megabits per second connection uh, to be able to to work with these servers and work with these vdi workstations which is pretty modest especially when a lot of us are on you know 500 uh, megabits per second or maybe even the gigabits per, per second that we're getting in a lot of places now so this four megabits per second is pretty modest for us to actually work on these systems and be able to store things, control VDIs on the cloud. They generally have browser-based or app-based remote control. We're dealing with browser-based. That's something we can get on really onto like a, a very modest PC that we don't have to worry about running. Uh, all we need to run is a, is a browser. Uh, some of the app-based ones, again, it's click and you're connected and you can start using that VDI, that workstation, just like you're doing on the machine you're on. It's going to feel just like it with the clicks and the picks and the typing that you're doing, except it's going to be somewhere maybe 2,000 miles away um, on, a, on a, a hosted environment. We can connect through public internet um, or we can deal with site-to-site -site VPN. So... If we're dealing with you know people working from home connecting to the VDI or connecting to the servers, it's okay. We don't have to have anything special. We just need the the public internet they're using. But we can also set up a, a VPN that's from one your site to the uh, to the to the party that owns the the stuff, the third party uh, service provider. Yeah, that's a good point there, Mike. Especially for some of our PDM customers, if you have, if you want a large VPN site to site, what we call up to that cloud machine, that's definitely available. Nice, and these are all on a. You could you could actually get that option too that that Kyle was talking about, where you have the hosted servers and the hosted virtual desktops. You can actually get those on the same platform. So when we deal with that, we actually could take advantage of the speed between those devices at the location where they're at. So we're remoting in there and using those devices. They might be on uh, 10 gigabits per second for that network where they're dealing with the server talking to the virtual desktops in the same building, and you're remoting into that using that and taking advantage of that really high-speed infrastructure. 
So there's it can be advantageous to actually use something like that, and that we can actually see faster speeds of things getting done on the back end. Next thing we want to talk about is security. Uh, this is a big one, so we're going to spend a couple minutes here, go through it kind of quick. But uh, with security, here's the deal: there's a lot we could do with security when we when we turn it over to someone that that's their whole goal is to provide servers and VDI for you. You're you're putting it into their hands and they're the experts at it. Uh, just like you're the expert in whatever you're making and doing, these folks are the experts. Uh, the middle one here, they're dealing with tier one vendors for security and hardware and storage. They're not actually going after the cheapest routes. They're going after the one that's gonna be the most secure because if something happens to them, they have a whole building that might go down. So these people are in it to basically uh, to make sure that you have a very secure environment with whether it be the data, data isolation on logical storage, those intrusion prevention systems. Uh, pretty much we always see that they have uh, full encryption, the, the disk encryption and file encryption. They can connect directly to your um, Active Directory system. So if we're dealing with someone where we need to create that site to site, have it set up to where it reads the Active Directory from your system so you get control access. Uh, we could generally do that with the uh, third party options here. We have advanced firewall features that keep people out that shouldn't be there and keep other traffic even within the building from getting into your server and your uh, part of that server or whatever that may be. Again, they have, they're dealing with the higher end security hardware and storage uh, folks. They're not going for the most, you know, the cheapest one, the lowest bidder. It's the one that's gonna keep them the safest. There's 24 seven monitoring, uh, which a lot of our customers don't have in their own IT departments right now. So that 24 seven monitoring can alert the key people to say, hey, something's going on. Um, they're, they're watching everything, they're, they're controlling it for you, that peace of mind so you don't have to worry about it. Even on the physical side, so these buildings, to get into these buildings, they're generally controlled by biometrics and ID management, especially the ones that we work with at A2K. Uh, they basically have a, a way that to get into that building, you have to have biometrics and ID management and only certain people could be in certain parts of the buildings. Uh, so it's very controlled. They generally can uh, offer antivirus, anti-malware, anti-ransomware protection on all the equipment. So the desktops and the servers. So when we're doing the virtual desktops and the servers, they're fully protected with this antivirus, anti-malware, anti-ransomware. So it keeps the entire thing secure where we, we see from time to time our customers, you know, get a weak link in their uh, IT security and something gets, we get an intrusion uh, with this uh, cloud services that's generally protected all the way around. Um, so it's a lot much, uh, a lot more safe to deal with. Again, we can have the VPN when that secured connection. So everything is safe and secure going back and forth. And then all the patching and updates, like we said before, it's not somebody's secondary job, it's somebody's main job and main focus. So you're leaving it to the professionals on that server side to deal with the patching and the updates religiously instead of it being a secondary thing. Flexible licensing. Again, here's another one we're going to chat about. Um, the, the, the licensing is generally a pay-as-you-go subscription model. They have flexible terms. You can go month to month, especially the ones that we're, we're partnered with. We could do month to month, annually, or even multi-year. Now, again, when you spread out the costs, um, you know, the, the daily cost or the daily average over multiple years, that one tends to be the cheapest because you're agreeing to be on it for, you know, three to five years. When you do annually, it might be a little more expensive on the daily average cost. And then when you do month to month, it's going to be the higher amount, but they're all pretty reasonable. So being able to do these and have these flexible terms is huge, as well as having a multiple license models. So we can do named users. We could even do processor or site-based, so depending on the needs there. Um, in addition, there's some other things that are generally covered in these, license, these, uh, these costs that are, are done. So we get the cost built in for the antivirus, malware, and, and ransomware software. We get that backup system licensing and the backup system capabilities. Um, that's all licensed through that pay-as-you-go model and under that, uh, that contract and that fixed cost. 
And like Kyle said, you get the SSL certificates, which are about 90 bucks a piece right now, as well as the virtual fireware soft firewall software. I'm trying to merge two words together there, sorry. Um, go ahead here and um, turn it over to Kyle here for a second. Sure, yeah. So uh, another item to think about when we are considering this IAS model is your overhead. What is your IT department up to? Do you even have a dedicated person taking care of just that server? Uh, with the IAS system, we can reduce your infrastructure, so you don't have to have that server on site. We can rely on someone else's server for your services. Uh, again, your software updates are not up to you anymore, and hardware updates are not up to you anymore, so we don't have to spend that much time every year taking care of that server that exists in your uh, office today. Of course, security patches are part of the upgrades, so you don't have to worry about that. And also even in user support. So if you know have somebody has having a server connecting to that is having a problem connecting to that server, you can have them call the third party uh, IAS provider on their own and have them kind of support them. So all those items can be taken off of your plate and reduce your overhead, reduce the amount of cost you have with running uh, this infrastructure in your site today. Yeah, and you and you mentioned uh, mentioned the end user support for servers, but even for the VDI and the workstation. So even if they're having problems with the workstation, you know you don't have to keep that extra one on hand or have that availability for you know help desk support because someone can't uh, log into with their Windows credentials. That's right. Another item that's very important for most of our customers is a disaster recovery plan. For most of our cloud implementations, what we do is what we call a 30-day rolling backup. And what that means is that your hard drive is backed up every day up to 30 days. And then on the 31st day, the first backup that was taken gets deleted. And it just keeps doing that for 30 days. So you can always go back in time. Let's say, you know, if a malware attacks your machine or there's physical damage or power outage, you know, any one of those things can happen but we can guarantee that backup plan, even a human error can happen here, and we can go back up to 30 days. And this plan can be tailored to you. So you know, if you need more than that, or if you need a more robust solution where we back up your entire infrastructure, we can do that and just talk to us, but just keep that in mind. Disaster recovery is definitely something to keep in mind with this solution, and we can definitely tailor the plan as much as you need it uh, to provide you the support you need. And uh, of course, with the services, scalability is also a big item. So what does it mean? Well, let's say you know you purchase another company and you have 30 new users coming in. Do you need more hard drive? Do you need more RAM, more flex, more speed? Whatever the case may be, we can accommodate that fairly quickly and easily, and we can tailor the service to you. So. There's a very fast response time if you need that extra hardware in a pinch. That's not a problem. Of course, deployment is not a problem. So we're talking about hours versus days or even weeks to get a machine in your office. Instead, we can simply uh, get the subscription model and start going pretty much right away. And like Mike said, with the month-to-month -month subscription service, you can deploy a test environment fairly quickly. So let's say you want to test out a new solution or you want to test it out a new upgrade that's coming. You can kind of spin that up fairly quickly, test it out and stop paying next month. And there you have it. So this capability and flexibility of the system is huge and something to think about as you're going through this uh, IAES model. All right. So the next thing we just wanted to, to let you know about, uh, because we, we have the services where we can help out with this. Um, you know, whether you're going with Microsoft Azure or Amazon Web Services or someone that maybe we deal with and partner with like Advanced 2000, we want to be able to help you out. So the goal here is be able to customize a solution where Inflow, you know, on the experts here at Inflow that deal with PDM and all the different implementation and the everyday piece of it, that we can actually help with the installation management the pdm admin side of things um, on your servers and on your equipment and now we're also introducing where we can uh, in, have uh, support over the uh, workstations as well so it's not we're not just limiting it to the servers uh, we're not just limiting it to having those servers in the cloud with pdm but also to have our hardware our vdis where we have the workstations uh, we can have those set up to where your solidworks users can be supported as well 
Uh, there's flat rate pricing. We can build these out really to customize what you need. It's comprehensive support from end to end. So we're working with these partners here to get the, the hardware, and you'll also be working with Inflow to get the services. So to get things like those upgrades every year uh, for SolidWorks or PDM, to get those, the server patching is getting done on the hardware side. So it's kind of the best of both worlds where we deal with the hardware and the software. Again, this is private and secure, just like because we're dealing with some pretty advanced cloud services people. Um, and like I said, that's PDM servers. So if you're looking to have a server, if one of your servers is coming up and you're saying, hey, we got to figure out what we're going to do with these aging servers uh, that we need to deal with and, and where our PDM is living, we can actually go ahead and put those up into the cloud and actually help you uh, be the admins over those servers as well if needed. Like we said, but there's also the workstation side of it where now if you have those aging workstations, let us know and we can help you get those onto VDI into the cloud and actually help you administer those as needed. Anything, is there anything you wanted to add to that last side, Kyle? No, I I would just say you know the the key point there is is it's really tailored to you. We'll sit down with you, understand your needs, understand what uh, your problems are today, and we can tailor that plan to you. It, it's not like a one fits all kind of thing, so it, it is very very customizable.